Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the Shop. It's a Thursday, so we're making this early. I had this in this stove that I made. We'll look in here, you can see where it was. And then the air was supposed to go up, was supposed to come in from the back of the stove while I turned around. It never worked, okay? So I bent that up and down and got it out of there so you can see where it's gone. Set bolt way back in there. And then we'll spin you around and show you how we plug the holes up in the back. Okay. That's a bolt head I ground to look like a rivet after I got it in there and tightened it. It took some work. Uh, this thing looks kind of nasty. I tried putting some gun bluing on here. And left it on there too long, so it actually started turning into rust. But that's a quarter I tried brazing in that brazing rod. It's supposed to braze dissimilar metals. You know, that's copper and whatever, and this is steel. But it's so thick, it took forever to heat it. But we're going to give this to the neighbor guy there for doing some yard work and stuff. It wasn't one of my greatest stoves, but it's worth watching the video on. I do have a cooking video on it. Uh, I ground that pipe so it fit on there better. Kind of made a curve to it. This is a bicycle sprocket. Nice little hot plate, though. It is a nice stove for charcoal. What I like about this, if you push down it real tight, there it locks the door shut. Now, I still never made a knob for that. We're still looking for something. There and take. And that's when I put the JV weld around these tubes in there, and it is still in there if you look in there. It's not burned out. So it held the tubes in there straight. But, you know, it was one of, one, one of the best ones, but not bad. Okay, let's go on with a tool that I made. At the end of this video, I'll put that video. I decided to post it Sunday in the shop at the end to put a video there because it's kind of a rambling long. It's not that great of a tool, but it is a handy little tool. It's not made the greatest, but you'll see what it is when we get to it. So stay tuned here. Okay. This is a nice screwdriver. I probably gave three bucks brand new. So I was doing that screwdriver challenge on one of them. And this only had about not quite that much sticking out. Not even that much. And I carefully heated it with my pencil tip torch. So I got the plastic to bubble. And it bubbled up. I had to kind of bevel that. But I made a little slot here with the Dremel saw blade. Well, the grinder blade. You know what they are. Those inch and a half big old blade cutting blades I got. It's just really cheap steel that I used. Uh, sixteenth of an inch or whatever. Something I was using on my stove making. So I had scraps left over. So it's uh, all like on my Boy Scout knife, which you watch the video it shows. See, it's only sharpened on one edge. Well, it kind of rolls over and I kind of modify it and put a little more angle. Okay, this is soft enough. It will bend if you don't watch it. I have went through wood with it. It will go through soft woods. Uh, don't do it on a big old hard 2x4 or something. Carried away. You're probably going to bend it because I heat treated it twice. Got it orange, yellow, ready to melt, past red hot and quenched it. But it's cheap steel and I know I've seen videos they tell you you're almost making it worse. It's not a tool steel. But you see where I kind of bent it. And, of course, I showed in the video how I've got the knife edge. But it's such a nice scraping tool. See, I've been cleaning my desk. I usually use a razor blade. This desk will look good. You put some furniture wax on This ain't look like brand new with all these scratches. This table, you know what it's went through, all the projects. I've done this winter and before winter. That's another one of them words. But the idea is to scrape this way. But to get the varnish off of, of uh, like hammer handles, because I got like a little butcher knife blade I made. I mean, look at that. It's scraping this stuff off the desk. Well, plastic. This is like a plastic, whatever you call it, tabletop. But it works so good. So stay tuned for a video at, at the end of that. 
Okay, let's go on to something else. I thought I'd just show it again. You know, that way you watch the video. Nice little tool. And if you can braze or spot weld out of the wire weld, you, you could make this. That's the only way I could tell you how you're ever going to get that in there, little piece of metal. Is braze or welded. And you can see when it was really hot, I showed her how it did suck up the brazing. Because I've made little tool bits for my lathe, the quarter inch uh, bit, and put little pieces of metal and stuff and braze it before with a big torch. Okay, let, let's pause. But that is a nice tool, and it's all set like that because I'm glad I didn't center this on here. It is a nice tool. It really is. I'm really happy with it. It's got such a nice handle on it when you grab it. So for like hobby work and stuff, enough of selling that. Buy one now, $9.99. Send in your. In there. <laughs> Let's go on to something different. Sunday, I can do what I want. Make fun, I ain't gonna do it. Okay, let's review this tool again. See where I got that to go through a little bit more there? It just kind of started going through on its own. You know, and if you look at a Dremel tool, this is where I got the idea. It's, it's the same thing. If I find my little. Here it is. It, it's the same thing. You've got a, the called holder and you got the threads. I mean, huh? there's a hole in there. If I take that apart, same thing. It's just getting the bevel right. You know, getting everything beveled and making the hole. And we're still looking for a collet to hold the beggar bits. But I use this to chamfer the end of a punch where you hammer on it you know and you get it mushroomed over a little i did the chamfer there you know where you angle it you know like this to where you hit it with a hammer it's it's all smooth and it did okay my little girl it doesn't spin real fast but uh simple little tool if you've got a dremel tool to make one but Stick it in your drill. You, you don't know. You might have somewhere where you want to run outside, work on something, a car or whatever. And you, it doesn't go real fast, but it works for what it is. You can put little wire brushes and stuff in it, too. You know, it depends on what college you have. That's that metric one of like two and a half millimeters, whatever. It's not even three millimeters. It's not the one they call eighth of an inch when you buy them bits. Okay. Let's go to this next. We're going to tear this apart so you can see how it's a four and one. I have a video on this somewhere and cannot find it. Uh, I have one on a big pin vise. Looks like a drill chuck I put a handle on, but I cannot find it. So it might have been mixed in with some other video. So let's pause. We'll take this apart and share it. And this is only like five bucks. It's from machining, some machining company. But I'm sure you can find one anywhere on the internet if you look. Okay, let's start down this end. Here's how this works. It's a call it too. There's your thing that tightens it. And here's your different sizes. Everything's magnetic. And I cannot tell you the size. All I know is there's ones of eighth of an inch. This is a nice tool. If you like doing little arts and drill stuff by hand, and here's the other one. This one of them tends to have smaller holes than the other one, and then that goes in here with the handle. When I first got this, I thought, "Wow!" I took this off. Well, it's two in one. It said four and one. What? Well, I looked at it. Well, here, unscrew it here. So, it's quite the tool. I, I, I'm positive it was only like $5. You know, everything's went up in price, but I have the package if I want to go look in my machining door to show you the actual package. But look up four and one pin vise, hand vise, hand, not hand vise. Hand vise is a totally different object. It's a vise with a handle on it for your hand. This is called a pin vise. There you go. In case you're interested in one of them. It is a neat little tool to have. Let's put it back together again. Okay. 
I might have had this together backwards because the threads are shorter up here when the handle goes. So it could have been backwards. And there's more threads there. And I'm sure inside of this it could be beveled inside of here too because you look how call it is made. You know, you, you're putting something down over a taper. My flitz rag here, I go for a background. I go out sun in the shop, I don't feel so pressured. We can take our time and... You know, that's pretty big. That's eight, that holds them eight inch bits. Or something. That's the little ones, I got it flipped around. Yeah. It don't hold that little small one. If I flip this around. I don't know if I can get this off with one hand or not. I've been working on trying to get some of this dirt out of my skin and my hands. A different cleaner and everything. I should show you that stuff that I found. that does kind of work. A uh, hand cleaner, but you know how that is. You're soaking yourself for... Yeah, see, I got it turned around because of the bits. Imagine trying to get something like this apart with one hand. There, let's set the camera down. We can do this. And you can see it's shorter threads. See, it's shorter threads up here. I think it was one of these sizes. So that's that little metric size, okay? That's really small for them little micro drill bits for cleaning out. That's why I bought this when I did carburetors. Had something to hold them half millimeter, one millimeter. Because look at that. Them half millimeter bits to clean out carburetor jets. That's why I got this because my big fumble fingers, I'd be dropping it. That's the reason I bought this, to hold them really, really small drill bits. And you, I'm sure you've seen when I worked on a carburetor, but... There, enough of selling that. Five ninety nine. dollars see, I do not. Somebody tell me, can you sell, what's it take to sell stuff on YouTube? Like, I notice people on eBay, they put their eBay link. And I have watched stuff where it says sold on eBay. Uh, what's it take where you're not in trouble? See, I'm always curious. See, on the kid, I tear stuff apart, see? That's got to be stamped over now, right? It's probably like a collar, and then they mushed it down. Yeah, they probably mushed it down inside of there. I hope you didn't hear my stomach growling. I grabbed my coffee and didn't grab no donuts. Yeah, it's like something where you mash it over. It's pretty neat. Let's find something else. Let's find something unusual. I, I just feel like I, I don't really have a project uh, for Sunday in the shop, so I'm going to put that video. But let's find something else to look at. It might be unusual. Some kind of tool I have around here. Ain't that neat? It's like a fidget tool. Imagine <laughs> sitting around bored somewhere. What's that thing? And my pocket, I can take it apart. You know, you could put pencil lead here, right? You can put it. In, you can put pencil lead in, in one of these things, and you can have a little pencil to draw with and stuff. You've all ever seen my drafting stuff? I found that travel thing where you can uh, draw the four foot circle where you screw all the stuff together. Major, oh, that's quite the find. It's. It's called like a travel tool. It's really quite the tool to fidget and take apart. There's a screw miss. I don't know if I ever found one or not. Yeah, people have been sudden me a long time. They probably remember it. It had the yellow pencil, whatever, with the light. It, it's quite the tool. It's old. It's probably made in the 60s, early 70s. See? We're looking at the timer. We're talking way too much. But like I said, it's sending in the shop. We do what we want to do. Today's the day we don't have to feel pressured or nothing. Show this real quick and I'll take a break. Here's that compass I had laying around for I don't know how long because I lost the screw for it. Well, I took common lead out of a pencil and I whittled that pencil down with one of my good knives and it stuck out like two inches. You try that challenge. 
whittled the pencil down with a knife and had the lead stuck out like two inches without breaking it. And I did it one day to have pieces of lead. I do spread that apart with a little screwdriver and stick it in there and take you some sandpaper and put a point on there. I'm going to draw here or not. I know somebody's going to hear my stomach growling because my camera's that close. Nah, we don't have no paper. But I'll just show that. Show the name. Bought it at like a hobby store somewhere. Sure, it's like Hobby Lobby. We'll take another break. We're, we're just looking for unusual stuff here today. Yeah, we're just bound and determined to show you this thing draw a circle. I mean, there's no lock on it. But there's gears in it. I mentioned that before. When you spread the part, the other side moves equally. That's like two gears down in there. That's why I wanted to show it. I was going to show it in another video one time. It's like a set of gears. Can we see it? Can you barely see it down there? When one moves, the other moves. And for a cheap set, it's pretty accurate. Oh, it's such a handy little thing. I got a great big one too for small stuff. Yeah, I said, break, break, break time, then we'll be back. Here's something me not to show the brand name. Remember, these these are free at the gas station. Watch this when you turn it up. Is that scary or what? Shell won't go out. Look, I just turned the flame down. You seen it? Watch this. I put a lighter like this in my pocket one time and my pocket caught on fire. Not show a name. Don't, 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 don't show the name. But it was free. So just beware. <laughs> just beware. Okay, we're going to close out the video and show you a look at my shifter knob collection if you haven't seen them. I don't know. Oh, that tape's on there. This is kind of a dud. This is when I put the Bondo in the pill container. It's way too dark. But then again, like I said, it, it's all the bits. If you put this in a car, let's find the top of the with all the glare. And say your shifter's about that far away. We're going to get about if you're sitting in the driver's seat. I mean, it look good to get up close. I'd recommend putting this on like an automatic because it is Bondo. It might shatter if you speed shifted, but it's not a bad handle. Okay, we'll put that over there. We'll go to the, like the flaming eyeball. I want the veins kind of kind of look like flame, but not. Those lines should have been a little thinner. Anybody could paint like this, just practice. And I said I use my compass to draw that circle. You can do this. Just get the paint, get the brushes like I showed. It's got the collection of all the brushes. I know I showed the package one time. You'll see them. You get a whole bunch of brushes, different tips on it. I didn't worry about the smudges. We're going to look for the defects here now. I said... I kind of thought of putting three, then I put four. But this is when you pull your, a pinstriper guy. You start out fat, you push down a little bit, and then you lift your brush to the very fine point. Even though it's not a pinstriping brush, that's how it gets thinner. If I practice, I'd never want to be a pinstriper, though. Okay, let's set that over here. And I really like this. I always had some different colored browns, but this was that ch really nice chocolatey brown. Molded milk ball is what it looked like. And that tan is whatever I had mixed up, but... That brown is... The brown on here, the base coat, is orange and black. Uh, the darker brown, I use red and black. Well... The whole secret is, and I've said it before, is when you're done painting your stripes, okay, 
you have to take some thinner and I used some of this brown paint okay to, and I brushed it on here and what it does is it smears all the colors together so it's not a, like a definite block line see that that would have been a, a real dark black it, it actually smears them together I said anybody can learn to do this there's one spot I like the best, if I can find it. I think it's this view. See what you think. Let's turn it around slow. Look, if I was in the car looking at it, if I was in the car looking at it, I kind of like where you see the two reddish ones with the... Right here. See the three light... I kind of like that one for the view at the back. It, you never know what's going to end up at, but uh, you could possibly thread this. Now, when I was a kid, we would get shifter knot and junkyard guy. <laughs> I went to the junkyard and said, "You got a shifter?" He goes, "Yeah, here I got some on the shelf." Because the kids are going out there always stealing the shifter ball, the shifters off the old four-speed Chevy, you know, the old pickup trucks, because they wanted a metal insert. So what I do is I just go get a shifter knob and take a big hammer and bust all the plastic off and leave that metal insert. Then you could drill into an 8-ball. I never really liked an 8-ball shifter. And everybody wanting a steel pool ball. But if you talk, if you found the guy that worked on the pool tables back when I was a kid, he would sell you one because they get beat up and worn down. And what wears down a pool ball like in the bar is you know your return and your pool table? Those are just rough wooden boards, and then balls fall in the pocket, and they roll down the hole, and all four, and that's what wears the ball out. Makes it look like garbage. So, back then, you, that's all you had to do. Don't go stealing one. Just talk to, and I never really liked the idea of a pool ball was too big. But, man, ain't that nice? I mean, for a man size hand, I mean, I can't tell you the measurement. We, we're going to be looking for a ruler now. We're always trying to find one. Uh, let's try to get an approximate diameter on this. You might find a plastic ball of anything, but the approximate diameter of this ball is two inches or maybe inch and three quarters. Get, get in frame. We got that bad hat. We're always looking. Oh, you start looking over to So it's around two inches. But this is my favorite. I mean, you're shipped in the old truck. But a little car. This reminds you of the old Hearst four-speed knob. White one. Smaller. You, you can't complain about that. In a small car. Oh, imagine a little dots in there and something like that. You know, a little... And you're just jamming that five-speed little transmission with this little knob on there. And if you epoxy it on there, they're not going to be able to unscrew it and steal it that easy. There you go. We're out of here. Look at the mess I made, all the junk I've got drug out here. So thanks for watching. And watch the video on making that scraper tool, which is long gone by now. I'll put that at the end of the video. So, see you next time. Hello YouTube, we're going to make us a new tool. See how that all is made on your, my Camp King? And then it sharpened on one side. You know like a pair of scissors. So you can get in there and gouge and scrape and make holes in wood. We want something bigger because we're always grabbing drill bits to deburr stuff and knife blades and all that. And we want to make something. And from all our stove stuff, we've got little pieces of metal out. That's sixteenth of an inch. 
One side's almost square. This one's hard to get out. I had this screwdriver cut off or something like maybe half inch sticking out. So I took my map gas with the little pencil tip, you know, with, with this on it. So I had a little small flame with map gas is hot and I just had the flame pointed like kind of at an angle just to get the metal hot until the plastic started bubbling. And then the vice grip set like that so I could yank it out. This is the part that was sticking out. Okay, so then I made a tool out of this. See how that's angled and that's sharp like a chisel? And I've been cleaning this hole out. See that? Because it bubbled it up and then it shrank. And, and I want this to go in. I want to be able to pull this in and out of there. It doesn't ever have to be glued in there. But there'll be a slot in there. You know, you'll see it when done. I'll bring you back for short little clip. It's going to be shaped sort of like that. You know, it's going to be a point. You know, I'm down here and show you. It's going to have one side squared. It's going to go down like that. And we'll put a slot in there in this little piece or another piece because I've got the screwdriver shank still laying over there. So if I don't think this is long enough, it is going to be braced. We're not going to mess around with the welder today. Uh, it's muddy out. There's people mowing grass, okay? It was muddy. We have, let's see, dew point in the 60s, low 60s, humidity in the low 70s. It's only 71 degrees out. I'm not running out there and mow my grass because it's wet. I do not want, if the sun comes out, I do not want the sun to dry out the dirt any quicker than it has to because that's the problem we've had in this drought area. It'll rain, the sun comes out, and it dries up, just turns to dust within a day or so. so we're going to let our yard grow wild. Last time we cut it, we had grass four inches of tall we was shooting out. So we had grass like that shooting out of that four foot mower deck and we kept mowing them like I, I think I explained before. I mow and I throw it off the yard so I'm mowing from the middle out. It, it looked like a hay row on one side of my yard. It looked like, if you know what farming is, wind rowing hay, when you cut down hay and the machine puts that little row so the baler can pick it up, that, that's what I call it. It looked like a row of wind rowed hay. Anyway, somebody's going to yell about, we're not here to hear about the weather. I love being sarcastic like that. I watch a couple channels where guys are finally started doing that because of the comments they used to get. Remember this? From the tool challenges, the uh, make the screwdrivers and stuff. Uh, I've got a bigger one where I made that nice tapered screwdriver and I bought this one. Only like three bucks, people. Ain't that a pretty little thing to make something out of? And here's the screwdriver I pulled it back out of the... I had one of the round balls on it and decided to use it for something else. I mean, I still got that. And that was a little prongs I had where it'd stick in there. I watched a YouTuber do that. He made little prongs of sticky screwdriver shaft back in the wood again. He knows who he is. Okay, let's get to work. We talked about this long enough. This is going to be one of the videos I talked more than what I did. But, oh well, it's for your entertainment too. Plus, I'm bored. You, when you can't, it's summertime, June, whatever, first week of June, I can't go outside because it's nasty, muddy, and raining, and 70 degrees out. Get to work. That's right, get to work. Let's talk more work. Make sure you got one side squared straight. I used the file and I lapped it on the sandpaper. I'll show you these real quick clips like this. You got to start with one edge straight, and if you're going to measure, make something perfect as good. Now we got to get one of these ends squared. 90 degrees. Whatever I think is the better end. This is the side it'll be ground on. It's the worst one. See that? That's what you got to do. This piece is how long? A little over two inches. That doesn't matter. It'll work for what I'm going to use it for. It's going to be pretty short up to the handle there. You'll see. See? It did good to take that piece do that and scrape that. See that? It fits right in. I can almost pull it out with my fingers. Clean all that where it melted. Back to work. Well, this took about two hours. 
See how that's angled? We'll show you on this. I had so much dust from hand filing, I'm not kidding you, I had to wipe off the dust. So, if you look at the top, it, it's not like that at all. It, it looks like a knife blade. Refocus? Okay. If that's the best way to the other one, because it was so mangled on the end from cutting with the Dremel tool. Now this edge is rounded over. This is not a just a sharp angle. It rounds over. Kind of like a lawnmower blade I always do. It, it actually round, rounds over a little bit. Oh, it's sharp. It'll dig through wood. Now here's my dilemma. Should I braise this on in the center of the, like that, or should I put it up here? I think I'm going to offset it, because I thought of it, well, I want, I'm going to put this angle part like this. I'm not even going to chop that off, because it's going to be ground when I braise it. So, we get this up here like this, bear with me, we're trying to keep these short. I don't want it in the middle. I want to go like this. It's only going to be stuck in there a little bit. Remember, there's only about that much sticking out here if I use this piece. I want it like that. It's a, you can make yours like this if you want it. See how I'm cross-hatching when I say it and file this thing? Okay. Back to work. Let's get this dremeled in here and get this thing brazed in here. I'm going to have to use my little jig and all that kind because of, I want it straight as can be. We're not welding it. We're going to braze it. So you will see the brazing on it. So if you don't like it, that's too bad. <laughs> not really like that. Go away. If you don't like my channel, go away. Ain't that a nice knife? Camp King. You know who else has a Camp King? His is rust the worst of mine, but I think I had one of these when I was a kid with a shoestring tied to it to my belt loop when we went hiking down the river. Imagine having something like this at my age I had when I was a kid. And I gave, what, eight bucks for this at the store? I have a video on it. Look it up, Camp King. And then you tell me, if you, wa if you watch it, let me know that you watched it. Let me know why that's spelled with a K. I give you a hint. It's not made, it, it, the, the name did not come from the USA, it came from another country. See it? Why is that a K? You'll, you'll figure it out. Okay, we're all braised and cleaned up, and it's going to be rough. We took grindstones to it, and we took an emery one to polish it, but there's a lot of braising on this side, but I'm not going to grind it out and just make it weaker. I did soak in, you can see where I had a slot in the metal. It did soak in there. There's brazing, so it's solid. It's been a little bit. We'll straighten up a little bit. We have to heat treat it now. So we don't know what it's going to look like after we heat treat it and have to clean it again. So here we go. Stay tuned. We'll straighten that up first because everything here is just soft metal yet. Okay, we got it red hot and quenched them. It is still not that hard. I bent the tip a little bit, gouged in the wood too deep as I was playing with it. But you can clearly see, see how good the brazing is? I'll polish it back up again. So it's brazed really good. Back off. I got that habit of getting in there close. It's just a bad habit. I like that I mounted in there like that. Well, we're done. We may try to heat it up one more time with quench the very tip. We had it red hot, but it's just a tool for scraping wood and stuff. This ought to work good for getting varnish off of hammer handles and stuff. I thought I'd show it to you like this before I clean up. See the edge? It's kind of rolled over. We'll roll back off again. And then this side's flat. We'll take some pictures with it like this and then once it's cleaned up again so thanks for watching